praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give honor to God from this morning, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and to the Blessed Holy Spirit. We thank God um, for another opportunity to just uh, uh, to be together on this Sunday morning. Praise God. We thank God for the opportunity um, uh, of life, health, and strength. We thank God for this um, a holiday. Praise God. The holiday. Father's Day in Jesus' name. I'd like to say Happy Father's Day to you all, all the fathers that are out there. And we just praise God for you uh, and for what he's doing in our lives in Jesus' mighty name. I want to just open up with a word of prayer. And in that, as I open up with a word of prayer, uh, then we'll go on with our Sunday morning service. Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you and I praise you and I worship you and magnify you this morning. I exalt you, dear God. Hallelujah. I extol you, dear God. I bless you as my King of kings, my Lord of lords. I bless you, dear God, as my Savior. We thank you for your name, O God. It's written in our foreheads and in our hearts and in our lives. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We believe that we came out from you, dear God, and unto you we shall return. We bless you. We give you praise. Uh, for all of these things. We thank you for the purpose that you've designed us for in this present life. And we thank you, dear God, for for causing us to uh, uh, hit the mark in, in terms of uh, achieving that which you designed for us to achieve the, uh, before the foundation of the world. We thank you for our being released by you into the earth realm. Dear God, we thank you for uh, your fatherhood even in Jesus Christ, dear God. Some of us, we call him our big brother, but we know that he is a represent representative. He, we, as we see him, we see you. And we praise you, Father, for, 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 um, for uh, giving us a realization of yourself, even in the face of Jesus Christ. And then, Father, we thank you for those fathers who we have memorialized and, and who are gone home uh, who have departed from this world. We even pray and we give you praise and worship for them having been in our lives. And as they have been in our lives, oh God, the things that you assigned that they would teach us and give to us, we praise you for those things, Father. Thank you for blessing us and helping us and uh, 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 continuing to strengthen us. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. I thank you for this altar, dear God, everything that I'm connected with, everything that uh, uh, shall watch this or uh, 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 listen and hear and be a part of this broadcast, oh God, that something will be said, something will be done that will bring forth into their lives bountiful blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. And dear God, let me not forget this one thing. Father, remember the fatherless on this morning. Those that have no fathers, dear God. Those that are hungry uh, for that uh, that factor, that that anointing, that that uh, that to be in their lives. But uh, some of them uh, uh, don't even know that that's what they're missing. God, whether they be male or female, remember the fatherless on this morning, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, and bless them, O oh God, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Once again, we thank God for, praise God, amen, this day that we uh, celebrate as Father's Day in uh, America, and for uh, 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 this day in the Church of Jesus Christ, praise God, uh, this is Sunday, first day of the week. At when we come together to worship and to praise God. We just bless God. I hope you've had a great week. Praise God. I hope God, that uh, you have had communication between you and the Holy Spirit. And he's continuously drawing you closer uh, to himself. Uh, you're learning more and more about the kingdom of God. And you are, uh, 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 how do we say, hitting the mark. For which God had created you for, uh, the thing that you had designed that uh, you would do and be in this present life, in your lifetime, 
we uh, I pray that praise God you're you're more and more entering into those things in Jesus name. Well, I'm going to talk about this morning, praise God, on this Sunday morning, praise God, the very concept of our, of this holiday. And I'm going to talk about Father's Day for a little bit, the fathers for just a little bit. As I was thinking, I was thinking, I was thinking in terms of, praise God, uh, uh, well, thinking about uh, one of my uh, mentors who's gone home to be with the Lord, who was... Um, I think if I were when I, when I when I think of fathers today, I think I would put him in the category of uh, of a father, and I think that for me, uh, it, it was it was just revolutionary in my own personal life in terms of a father. Um, I think that I, I've always said that praise God, uh, and you know that even though uh, the scripture we're going to use today says that. We don't have many fathers. Um, I, I've always believed there were father-like figures, different father-like figures that were placed in my life. I mean, uh, those that had done three times what I hadn't done once yet, those that had wisdom that I could draw from, and I would not make a lot of the, the mistakes that others have made. Um, uh, those that um, had 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 done what I was trying to do, um, and I, I be, I've always believed that God had placed uh, several of them in my life. So I've always said that you know, I've got a few <laughs> few fathers, and um, but there's there's one in particular, and I won't call any names. There's one in particular that I I, I believe was probably the first that um that uh, uh revolutionized my thinking in terms of uh who I am as an individual uh, who, uh, uh my my uh spiritual genealogy and so forth and so on and of course I recognize my natural father uh my natural father praise god uh my, my bloodline and uh, I, I recognize that but I, I don't it was, there was very little that he gave me from a spiritual perspective. He gave me what he had, I suspect. Taught me a little bit about life. <laughs> and life for him was hard uh, growing up, praise God, in, in the, uh, probably I would say the 50s, uh, 50s, you know, and, and, and 1950s, and, and you know those times, times of civil rights and all of these things. So life for him was very hard, but he he uh, managed to achieve some things. So he taught me some things, but not a lot in terms of spiritual things. My father, in terms my natural father, in terms of spirituality, um, uh, he I think he was a spiritual person. Well, I, well, I know when I when we talked, had personal talks, he talked about uh, Jesus Christ fondly. And he talked about uh, Christianity fondly, but he also talked about it <laughs> kind of uh, harshly in some places. I think he had, had some church hurt, and and that church hurt has caused him to not be uh, fond of all churchism, so to speak, and whatnot. And uh, but I want to talk a little bit this morning about. Uh, I think I want to start with our natural fathers. And as I start with our natural fathers, I'll get to that place where I deal, I'm going to deal with, uh, introduce and to some and uh, just present again for a few seconds of worship to our spiritual father. Uh, Father's Day, praise God. And, uh, and uh, uh, again, the scripture that we'll use is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And from 1 Corinthians chapter 4, I'm going to read about three verses. We we'll start at verse fifteen. Let's see. Yeah, First Corinthians chapter four, verse fifteen says, "For though you have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have you not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you." Be ye followers of me. 
Praise God. Let me read that uh, once again. And I want to read this one in the easy to read translation. That was King James. Uh, verse 15. You may have 10,000 teachers in Christ, but you don't have many fathers. Through the good news, I became your father in Jesus Christ. So I beg you to be like me. And this is the apostle uh, Paul teaching and praise God. And he's, uh, I believe it's apostle Paul teaching. Um, yes. And um, he's teaching us that, um, that teachers, we may have lots of teachers, but every teacher doesn't qualify to be a father. I was taught that the greatest crisis in the home and in the nation is not the lack of money. The greatest crisis in the nation is not economic uh, investment and, 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 uh, and, and those, those things. The greatest uh, crisis in the home and in the nation is not even crime. But the lack, the greatest crisis in the home and in the nation right now is the, uh, uh, is the absence of fathers. And this has been um, many uh, scientific uh, researches has been done on this and it's proven to be true. The greatest crisis in the home and in the nation is the absence of fathers. In our lifetime, the ideas about uh, gender and the ideas about marriage have changed. And so our ideas about fatherhood are constantly changing also. Uh, my personal opinion you know, is that there is no substitute for a father. And I'm talking about traditional now. I, again, as I, as I said, our ideas continuously change concerning uh, gender. And our ideas continuously change concerning marriage. They're continuing to change. But my personal opinion is that I don't believe there's any substitute for a, a traditional father that is a male figure who considers who who is uh who is uh called the father in a family i believe if our father is one of the uh not one of it is is a foundation in the home a foundation in the nation um just a few moments if we would explore a few ideas about what a father uh, about uh, fatherhood and fathers I, I, again I, I'm teaching based on uh, some of the, the ideas that I learned from my own mentors first of all that um, a father is not a, a, a father is not necessarily merely a teacher just because someone teaches you facts and some, someone teaches you thoughts and ideas, uh, they don't have to care about you. So father is more than just a teacher. Somebody comes in your life and they're teaching you interesting things. And some of them, they, <laughs> they just mem mem uh, memorized also. A father is not just a teacher, merely a teacher to you. Uh, a guardian, somebody assigned to, to, to keep you, somebody assigned to, 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 for you to live with. So, you know, a guardian is not necessarily a father either. Just because a person is a guardian in your life doesn't mean that they have taken on the responsibility and the role as a father in your life. A guardian, somebody who shows up sometimes, they watch, they pay the, the rent or the mortgage, and a guardian is not necessarily just a, a, a father also. A friend. A friend is not necessarily a father. You know, you may have a cousin or a nephew or a good friend that took you in. You didn't have any place to go. And a friend is not necessarily a father. 
all of these a teacher guardian friend may have had some father fatherly traits that they they exercised in 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 uh their relationship with you but uh, the, these things teachers friends guardians are not necessarily uh what this this term fatherhood implies there's a few things that helps us to identify uh, what Paul saw a father as in this verse that we just looked at. And that is 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15 through uh, uh, 17. And uh, let's look at that chapter again. Verse uh, 15, though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For I have begotten you in Jesus Christ. A, a father, again, you can have instructors, or teachers, and but it's not necessarily, Paul was teaching them, but they're not necessarily your fathers. They're teachers and instructors, and they, you know, <laughs> you can go to college, and you can go to, uh, we send our kids to, to grade school, and they learn. They have many teachers and many instructors. We turn on the YouTube. We turn on the radio. We turn on the television. And there's many instructors. Instructors, teachers. But Paul teaches here. But yet they're not fathers. They're not fathers. Because the, the, motives, the motives of teaching can vary. The reason that people teach uh, vary. Dr. Martin Luther King mentioned something once. He called it a band leader instinct. You know, where everybody wanted to be out front. He, everybody wanted to be <laughs> the one that was leading the show. And uh, uh, But we shouldn't be careful about that. The book of Proverbs, uh, Ecclesiastes teaches us that, that uh, a te teacher's uh, will receive um, more, um, I don't want to say punishment, teachers will receive, uh, God will look at the teacher's life more. If, where there's much wisdom in a person's life, where he's supposedly a teacher, there's much responsibility in their lives also. So a teacher uh, uh, has to have some type of accountability in order to be considered uh, 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 even operating in, in a trait as, 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 a, as, a, as a father. Paul teaches here that, again, the, 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 uh, 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 though you have 10,000 instructors, you have, you have not many fathers. The father has the ability to model before you a life that you will be drawn to emulate. Have you ever had uh, a relative, in this case a father, you've seen a father where you said, I don't want to be like that. Have you ever had a father that um, their, uh, their spiritual uh, DNA, who they were as spiritual people, uh, you said, if that's spirituality, I don't want none of that. And I hope that doesn't kind of get in me. Have you ever uh, uh, had a father or seen a father that talks truth? They talk truth. They talk things all the time. But they don't live a deeper life before the children so that the children will look at their lives and, 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 and say, I want to emulate that. I want that to be a part of who I am as a, as, a, as a man. I want that to be a part of who I am as a husband. I want that to be a part of who I am as a father. The father lives a truth, a, a truth before the, uh, the kids that's emulatable. And that the, 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 the kids are drawn to emulate a teacher may have a lot of facts and a, t a lot of things, uh, you know, two plus two is four. <laughs> you know, a, 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 the teacher may have a lot of facts, 
but they may have uh, uh, after the facts they 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 may may have a life that you totally do not want to emulate the father lives a life that deep truths are released and activate in his home deep truths are released and activated to his children the children see them in their uh their their, their daily life uh which is a good word uh the father is one that is is present and observable the father is one that's present and is observable the pro- the father isn't one who is not present and so you you don't you you don't ever see him to be able to draw anything from his life the father is not one who um who uh uh uh, uh you know the the esoteric you don't know who they are they never live anything truly out in front of you and so many deep things of life that belong to life are never transmitted we never receive those things uh and that's a that's a, a tragedy it's a tragedy that the deep things of life are not lived by the father when when the deep thing i i used to have this this idea that one of the first things that should be taught a, a child is uh, uh when jesus was asking saint uh, luke uh, chapter 11 verse i think it's one the disciples came to jesus and said lord teach us to pray and jesus answered their 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 their, their question they came and asked jesus a question they asked jesus to do something and jesus answered it they said lord teach us to pray and jesus said okay i'll teach you how to pray he said when you pray this is how you do it the first thing that he told them was to say, our father, our father. Now, what was Jesus doing when he was teaching them to say our father? The first thing is we have to take that word our and put it into context in terms of what Jesus was, was saying. Jesus was, they, they came to Jesus because Jesus was such a renowned, uh, Jesus was famous. Jesus name was abroad in terms of, uh in terms of uh the the kinds of miracles people would uh, uh the the information about Jesus was that here's a man that knows how to talk to God and God talked back to him here's a man who who has a relationship with God and God has a relationship back with with um with 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 with, with him and so they knew that and they knew because they had observed they had observed and because they had observed they 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 had seen some deep truths that they 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 could draw from or they they wanted to draw from a father lives an observable life that children and people want to emulate they want to emulate so so they they ask Jesus, teach us what we see in you. We want that in us also. And Jesus teaches them. The first thing is our father. Our. Our means that Jesus was bringing them into the family. Or that God recognized them as family. Or that God recognized um, uh, these that wanted to learn how to have a relationship with him. God already recognized relationship with them. So Jesus tells them something that they didn't know that was now going to bring them into bring them into uh, a, 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 a worship, a true worshiping of God, but also a receptivity of who God was as a father. Jesus says the first thing is our this is a relationship kind of thing. This is not just the mighty and the majestic son of the living God. 
the the or the or the, the the great apostles and prophets of the living God. This is a relational thing. It's our our my Father, my God. First thing he teaches them is to 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 recognize your relationship when you come before God. Don't come to don't come to Him as a stranger. You're walking down the street. You don't know where you are. You're knocking on doors and says, hi, I, I, I don't know you. You don't know me, but um, uh, hi. Could you, could, you, could you look out for my family? Could you do this? Could you? No, no, that's not what he's saying. He says, hey, I'm giving you a specific address to go to. And when I give you that specific address, that address is the address of your father. And your father is your father. You're going to be able to uh, you're going to be able to receive uh, a, a glory, a power. Uh, you're going to be able to receive a spiritual DNA. You're going to be able to receive uh, activating information from him. That's going to cause you now to be able to 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 to, to be be, uh, be greatly in his likeness. Our father make a, a relationship it's it's he's jesus is teaching that he is he is he is able he's present and able to be able to be imitated or emulated in fact paul teaches that in the um the 16th verse of this he says therefore i beseech you be imitators of me paul teaches that as an apostle he was a father of the uh, he says, you have not many teachers, but you, he, he says, you have a father. And Paul says, he says, be imitators of this, this apostolic anointing. Be imitators of this fatherhood. Uh, the book of John, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, 1 John uh, uh, especially, 3 John, There are places the Bible teaches us to, to love your family, love your wife, love your children, like Christ loved the church, like God loves Christ. Jesus taught, as you have seen me do unto the Father, even so you do. And if you come into that relationship, if as I have entered into relationship with the Father, I'll bring you into relationship with me so that you can be in relationship with, with uh, the Godhead. You can imitate what becomes observable to you. Most of our spiritual relationship with God sometimes is nominal. That is, it's full of hope. But we've, we never get to that place where we grasp, we cross over a, a border, so to speak, a line, and enter from one dimension into the next dimension of our relationship with the Father. We never see him. We never see him in the word. We never see him in, in, in his promises. We never see him in his. He's not present for us. We don't have his presence. We don't live to be in connection with his presence. We don't look in the scripture to try to find his face observing to observe him. It is in finding that he's present with you. It is in finding his presence. It is in understanding that he's there and his activities of saving, healing, deliverance, his activities of love as we watch and observe our father. The traits of our father begin to be activated in us. You ever heard somebody say, you're just like your dad? You're just like your dad. It begins to, the, the, the traits begin to be magnified 
in us. So much so that when you begin to say, Our Father now, my Father, that heaven seems to open to you and that uh, the, a presence seems to show up in your life and you know that that something is present or he is present with you. And then promises begin to manifest and you are observing the activation and the activity of God in your life. And as you are observing the activity of God, you're going more and more in likeness to him. So one of the first things Jesus wanted us to learn about this is what I want to teach you now how to be a religious organization. That's not what Jesus taught them. One of the first things that Jesus taught was relationship with the Father, relationship with the one who orchestrates all of these, all of these things. I want to read a few verses before I close out here today. Uh, uh, over in Mark chapter 12, very good verse. I'm going to just show you um, quick things about the Father. Mark chapter 12, look at verse 28, and it says, And one of the scribes came, and having heard himself, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had, uh, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which of the, which is the first commandment of all? And he answered him, the first commandment is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Here it is again. A, 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 a son of Israel asks Jesus, uh, what's the first commandment? What's the greatest commandment? Says some, some of the, uh, 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 some of the, the translations. What's the first command? What's the greatest commandment? And he said, Israel, listen. The first commandment is to love God with all your heart. He says in verse 30, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first commandment. So the first thing he said, the first thing uh, that, that, that God is, if you want to know what is God interested in, what is God, is God interested in us um, jumping <laughs> through hoops and and you know what is he interested in doing uh great feats and walking around the world yeah well if he gives you that as a witness and as a testimony and as a gifting for you to accomplish in life jumping through hoops and playing basketball or football or if he gives you all of that uh uh then that's great that's 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 for you to glorify god with but if he doesn't give you that you're not any lesser because you don't shoot hoops or run touchdowns or kick soccer balls. You're not, you're not, you're not any less. You're not any less. So, so, um, but he says, I don't, I don't want you to, the first thing to, to, the first thing we ought to teach a kid, a baby, is to love God. See, you can defeat the devil early in the game before you get down into the, because the first thing that he's going to come at them with through cartoons, through I don't care what it is, is a, to divide that child's mind. In other words, if you teach, uh, the nation of Israel has a prayer, they call it the Shema, and some might pronounce it differently, but it talks about how that God is just one. You know, we serve nothing but just this one. But here's the point. If you get that squared away and straightened in the mind of a child uh, early, then see, because there's two spirits coming from the world. And those spirits are going to be spirits of confusion. And they're going to, they're, in, in the beginning of that child's life, they're going to try to bring that child into a split, uh, double-mindedness concerning Concerning who that child, who that child believes that he is, I prayed over my son. This is not a braggadocious statement. I'm just using it as an example of how we can do that from the the time our children are infants. I stood over him as an infant in a crib, 
while he slept and I prayed. You're of the apostolic and the prophetic rank, a psalmist and a minstrel in the house of God all the days of your life. You'll never know de deeds of sin like some. You'll never know drugs, alcohol, or nicotine. You'll never know homosexuality or any of these things. Now, of course, I cannot force him to do anything or be anything, but these are my prayers for his life. Okay, These were my prayers for his life. These were my confessions over him. And it got to a place after he got a little older, wasn't sleeping in a crib anymore, sleeping in a bed. Sometimes I'd think he was sleeping as I was declaring these things over him. I did it. I would think I did it no less than four times a week. I tried to do it every night. But it got to a place that he would say, I would think he was sleeping. And he'd look up and say, Dad, you miss such and such a thing. Because it had gotten so much into his spirit. I can't, I can't say he memorized and all those things and all that. But I'm saying that's one thing that you can do. The children and the people in the Old Testament named their children what they felt God wanted him them to be. What they wanted him to be. I named my child Michael David. And that means that he was a worshiping warrior. David was a worshiping. And of course, Michael is, is, a, is an angel. He's a worshiping warrior. But that's not necessarily, of course, he has his own will. He has his own, you know, he has to make his own choices and whatnot. These are the things that I thought I received. I could have been wrong. And and God would lead him into that right, right, right that right place. So, so again, the first thing we want to do is teach that child. Love God with all your heart. That's the first thing. The man came to Jesus and said, what's the first commandment? What's the greatest commandment? First commandment is love God with all your heart. Love the Father with all your heart. All your soul, all your strength, all your might. What does that mean? Being very religious, always in the prayer room, always in the uh, before the Bible, always in not, never uh, laughing, never smile. Does that does it mean that? No, it doesn't mean that. And uh, if God tells you, I want you to be a monk and go lock up in a cave somewhere, go ahead and do it because there's a blessing in that. But I don't think for the majority of the people, I, I think 99% of the people in the world are not called to go to a cave and sanctify themselves. Most of us are called, given a talent, a gift to operate in life and in society, and then we, 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 we master that gift. Everybody's not called to the pulpit. Everybody's not called to the piano. Everybody's not called to sing. Everybody's not called, you see, that's different things. Some are, some are called uh, to write. Some are called... To, 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 to lead in, in politics. Some are called in business. And they're anointed to do that. They're anointed to, to, to do those things. So the first thing, love God. Love God. When you look at God, I'm going to stop right here. When you learn to look at the Father, here's what happens. It's such an amazing thing. A transformation. To, when you really Learn to look at Father and you conceptually begin to understand your Father. When you observe the Father, here's what you begin to understand. That you begin to see in Him the things that He wanted for you. You begin to understand that He is the foundational source of your life. It is because of Him that you exist. It is because of him that you live. You, you are here because of a purpose that he wants fulfilled in your lifetime. The only reason, the greatest reason you exist is because you've got something to do. That's why you were released. That's why you were given. The, 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 the place you were born. The family you were called to, all of those give you uh, inklings uh, uh, concerning who you are and what God designed you. Surely you're not, you're not going to live a human being forever, but you have a, 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 a DNA from God that has come down to you, the Father. That has come down to you. Oh, I wish I could just preach and teach on this so much more, but uh, I, I'm going to stop right here for today. The Father is um, 
Uh, here, here's, uh, let me give you just one more, one more verse of scripture. I should have been finished, but one more verse. This comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, just a little deeper in the book, same book. And this is one that I don't know we hide from or whatnot, but, but I don't know why, because it's it's the Father's glory. We give the, the glory to the Father. I love the scripture in the book of Revelation. They're talking about we have the Father's name in our forehead. And, and some of us, we bumble over understanding that scripture like as though we had an angel right in our head, you know, Father. And that's not what it means. But I don't have time to go over that today. Excuse me. Come to our Tuesday night Bible study, and you know, we'll get better understanding. Okay, First Corinthians fifteen twenty four. Then come of the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God. When who shall have delivered up the kingdom to God? Even the Father. When he shall have put down all rule and all authority. And all power, that's where it's headed. Somebody is putting down all rule, all authority, all power, all of that stuff that Satan has done, it's going to be, it's being put down. But he says, then cometh the end when he shall, del when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and all power, watch this, verse 25, for he must reign till he have put all enemies under his feet. Now, this is talking about Christ. Verse 26, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. You got to understand what that looks like. For he have, put, he have put all things under his feet. Watch this. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. Verse 28, and when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. We have our father's name written in our forehead. We have our God. That our Lord is living to glorify. Let me pray with you. You may be a father that has been uh, trying to do the right thing. I have a relative who, when he was younger in life, he he's kind of fast, you know, like we all are. And I remember him having a kid, and he had to pay child support all of his life pretty much and i watched him struggle but i watched him hustle and he did a great job he did a great job but that's what happens to us when we're young and sometimes we we don't know you know when we we we, we get trapped we get stuck sometimes i want to talk to some fathers praise god who are who are um they want to do right they want to do good they want to get it together but they, they, they have not been, been able to. I want to talk to some up-and-coming fathers, praise God, who, who don't re they, they don't really know what fatherhood looks like because they've never had anybody present in their life to model this is what a father should look like. Or they never had, and I'm not saying you've never had a perfect person in your life because no, fathers are not perfect people. Fathers are people who love they we we love and as we love and through our emulation of Christ and emulation of the Father, as we love, then uh, the love covers a multitude of of weaknesses and it covers a multitude of of sin. It it it, it reaches where uh, our 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 uh, uh, inefficiencies our insufficiencies cannot reach. I want to talk to a, a few fathers that are doing good to continue to pray over those 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 uh, those young people. I don't care if they they're, they're uh, small or teens. Or I want to I want, I want you to just just to begin to continue to pray 
as we this world moves forward the ideologies and the mentalities of the world continue to to, to shift and change I want you to continue to uh, to stand on behalf of your houses so father I thank you and I praise you and I bless you this morning I pray now God we've been talking about we need a parent a father who's who's present and observable Lord I pray that you would be present with this audience now and for everyone that will hear this message through your presence let the the spiritual principles that you put in place bear witness now dear God to your father who is we bless you because of the name of Jesus Christ and how that you've reached out for us through him. Remember then these men that we are calling fathers and these women that may not even have a man in their lives, but they're raising these children. Remember them, O oh God. We've made the statement that the greatest crisis in our families and in our nations is the absence of fathers. Oh Lord, do something like only you could do. Restructure, revive, and help. And we'll give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We say amen. And amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, I hope you've been blessed, amen, from the teaching on this morning, praise God, about Father's Day. I have been tremendously blessed delivering the Word of God. We thank God for uh, this uh, this holiday. I want you to, if you got a, a good person in your life, I want you to uh, tell them. Tell them that you love them. Tell them you appreciate them. Tell them that, tell them that I see you're trying, you know. Uh, fathers need encouragement too and uh, and I'm sure because of their love for you they're gonna rain it right back down on you you might give it you might give them uh, accommodation or, or a thank you or a blessing a word of blessing but they're gonna they're gonna give it back to you I promise you that <laughs> so uh, yeah uh, go to dinner cook at home, be together, and I know that God is with you in Jesus' name. All right, remember, praise God, praise God in the online, uh, in, our, in the giving, praise God. We're not back into our church building yet. We're talking about it, and we're going to uh, do some different things, praise God, and it's going to take us, uh, uh, going to, I, I want to continue to, the, the streaming, and uh, but we we also need to alter in terms of some of the space that we have and that we utilize. And uh, so we we want you to rem remember us in your online giving. Praise God! You can give to us. Praise God by Cash App and also by PayPal. And praise God! Those uh, coordinates are on the screen. And as you do so, uh, I know the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember us also on Monday nights where we have the intercessory prayer, which is dedicated for you. Amen. With Pastor Elaine Brown, we'll spearhead that prayer. She's committed, dedicated, and sanctified unto uh, reaching heaven on behalf of you. And praise God. And for on behalf of the city, the state, the nation, your tribe, personal tribe. And I know that if you take the time either to come out or just to get your name on that altar, your family's name, that God will uh, find a way to to, enter, to touch your life in Jesus' name, for good in Jesus' name. Then remember also our Sunday morning, well, this is the Sunday morning service, remember our Tuesday night Bible class 
which is a little deeper if we kind of get into the Bible and research and research and research. And uh, and we're closing up, we're finishing out in the book of Revelation. It's probably have one or two more meetings in that book. And I will be having, having a great time in Jesus' name and whatnot. So thank you. Praise God for your attention, your time. And I hope it's been, I hope it's been a blessing to you t- today in the name of Jesus Christ. We say shalom. Be blessed. Remember, you are the apple of God's eye, and God loves you. It is the Father's good pleasure to give to you the keys of the kingdom. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Shalom.